If your subwoofers are out of phase, it will absolutely kill your bass. Take a look at these subwoofers right here. You can see it with your own eyes. These two subwoofers are clearly not moving in sync with each other. Here's another pair of subwoofers. They're doing the same thing. And here is yet another. If you couldn't see it, let me slow the footage down. We're gonna step through it frame by frame. As you can see, they're not perfectly out of phase, but they're clearly not moving together. In fact, it seems like every time I wire up multiple subwoofers, they're always out of phase. You've noticed it, you've commented on it. And to be honest, it might be one of the most common and frequent comments that I get here on the channel. I'm human, I make mistakes, but when I make mistakes, I own up to them and I fix them. But I can assure you that these subwoofers are not wired out of phase. What you're actually seeing is a side effect of the center and the camera. You've seen this anytime you've watched a video where the subwoofer seem to be wobbling around. There's no way physically possible that a subwoofer could wobble like this right here. And for this video, I've exaggerated this effect by orienting the subwoofers vertically instead of horizontally. When the camera shutter opens, it doesn't capture a complete image. Instead, it scans the image from the top down to the bottom. And if things are moving at just the right speed, the image is gonna be distorted. This is called a rolling shutter. So if you can't trust what you see with your own eyes, then how can you tell if one of your subwoofers is wired out of phase? And what are some tips and tricks to avoid accidentally wiring your subwoofers out of phase? Let's Pop one of these subs right here out of the box, flip the wiring and see what happens. While we're doing that, let's clarify a couple of terms. If you flip the positive and the negative terminals on just one of the subwoofers, then you flip the polarity and your subwoofers are gonna be 180 degrees out of phase. One will move in while the other one moves out, thus canceling each other out completely. And two different speakers can be any number of degrees out of phase. Phase is mathematically related to both time and distance and you can run into phase cancellations in all kinds of situations. It's really common when you're trying to set up your front stage in a car where one speaker is in the door next to you really close and the other speaker is over in the passenger side door a long ways off. We also see phase issues whenever we're dealing with crossovers. Crossover components can cause a phase shift that leads to a dip at the crossover frequency. So an easy trick if you find you don't have any mid bass in your setup is just to flip the polarity on your subwoofers. In fact, most amplifiers will have a switch to make it easy. You just flick the switch and you're done. Some amplifiers even have a phase knob that you can use to dial in the exact right amount of phase difference between your subwoofers and the rest of your system. You can also use time alignment in a DSP to accomplish the exact same thing. Okay, back to these subwoofers right here. The polarity is now reversed. I'm gonna hook up to this black box right here. This is called a DATS. If you don't have a DATS, stay tuned. I'll show you an easy way to tell if your subwoofers are out of phase without buying a bunch of fancy test equipment. The DATS itself is easy to use. You just hook it up and run a sweep. Here are the results. With the polarity flipped, you get something odd. It's not what you would expect for a ported subwoofer box. You only have one peak right here. This is what you might expect to see for a sealed enclosure or some subwoofers in free air, meaning they're not in an enclosure. So right here are the before results when the subs were wired in phase, and you get exactly what you would expect with a ported enclosure. These two peaks here and this dip in the middle at the tuning frequency. I run a DAT sweep on every enclosure that I build to check to make sure that they're right. The typical person watching this video probably doesn't have a DAT. It's probably not worth spending the money on one just to test one or two subwoofer boxes. So in a little bit, I'll show you some cheap and easy ways to test this. If you consider yourself a pro or you're just a hobbyist that builds a lot of subwoofer boxes, then you need to pick one of these things up. It is the best way to make sure that your boxes are right. I'm only able to afford tools like this thanks to the generous support of all of my patrons and channel members. $10 patrons, they get their name across the screen right down here. And $25 and up patrons like Jonathan, Joaquin, JD America, God King Toro, Timothy, and Bo all get a verbal shout out in the video. So thank you for your support, guys. If you enjoy this kind of content, click this link right up here and join them over on Patreon. One thing that will not work is using a multimeter to test the DC resistance. Here, the DC resistance is hanging out about 1.3 ohms. These are dual 4 ohm subs with everything wired parallel for a 1 ohm load. So a 1.3 ohm reading on the multimeter is not throwing up any red flags. 
flags. Here's one of those cheap and easy ways to make sure your polarity is not flipped. I've got some tape hanging over the port and I'm playing somewhere around the tuning frequency and the port's not making any wind. That's because the subs are canceling each other out inside of the box. So the port in this case is doing absolutely nothing. Here I'm using a shop towel so you can visualize the port air movement when the speakers are in phase. Well, you can't use that trick if you've got a sealed box. We'll get to the sealed box in just a second. But before we do that, I want to show you this super easy trick that's going to help you reduce the chances of flipping the polarity on your subwoofers. And that's really simple. Pick out a wire that has clear and obvious color coding. I have grown to hate this wire right here. It's good wire, but both of the insulators are the same color. And the only way to tell them apart is to look for this really tiny lettering. It's only on one side of the wire. It's difficult to see, especially in low light situations, and you are tempting fate with this wire. This wire here is not any better. It's probably worse. It uses a clear jacket and one side has this stripe that's really hard to see. Skip right over this stuff. This wire here also has a clear jacket, but the conductors are a different color. That's a step in the right direction. But again, in low light conditions, those two colors start to look a whole lot alike. I really like this wire here. It's got a blue and black jacket. This is a big jump up because you've got two distinct colors. Now this right here is my favorite wire. It's black and red, so it's really hard to mess that up. When I was originally wiring up these subwoofers right here, I actually flipped the polarity on the two voice coils on one of the subs, and I was able to catch it because of the color coding. Red to red, black to black. It's that simple. And it may not seem like a big deal. Really, how hard is it to look for some stripes or a little bit of lettering? But if you can dramatically reduce the probability of making a mistake without spending any extra money just by picking a different type of wire, why would you not do that? Okay, what about a sealed enclosure? For that, you have two options. Both are going to work with a ported box as well. Just grab a 9 volt battery and touch it to the speaker terminals on the side of the box. And the other tool is your ears. In fact, that's probably the first red flag. The most direct way to tell is just to listen to it. It's not gonna be terribly loud. I'm gonna play a 50 hertz tone. I'm looking at the microphone and my levels are louder than the subwoofers. Here's 44 hertz. And it definitely sounds out of phase because it's just not loud. If your subwoofers are out of phase, you'll definitely be able to hear that problem. And you can think of everything else in this video as a way to confirm that that is the actual problem that you're having. If your subwoofers are 180 out of phase, you'll get hardly any sound out of them, no matter how much power you throw at them. Here's the SPL with a 40 hertz test tone and the polarity swapped. And here it is with the correct polarity. That's about a 10 dB difference that may not seem like much but it takes double the power to gain extra 3 db so that is a big difference to learn more about how dbs work click on this video right up here i'm justin this is the diy audio guy youtube channel and i will see you on the next adventure